We are so delighted to have on Divine Discoveries tonight to welcome the legendary Williams Brothers. They have released 42 albums. 23 albums are on the gospel charts, and they have also been inducted in the International Gospel Music Hall of Fame. We are so glad to welcome again on tonight the Williams Brothers to Divine Discoveries. We have a part of the group with us on tonight. We have uh, Melvin Williams. How are you doing, Melvin? How are you, I'm Melvin? I'm good. How y'all doing? Doing great. Doing great. I'm excited. To be yes. Well, we are so excited to have you. And we also have Andre Tate, known as Dre. We are so happy to have you tonight. How are you doing tonight? It's a pleasure being here. God bless y'all for even just having us. We're really excited. Our pleasure. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we are in a situation where uh, we have interviewed uh, gospel artists, uh, but this is our first time being able to interview what's called legends. Yes. This is living <laughs> legends. Many times people are not legends until they pass on or uh, transition. But while we have them, uh, we greatly appreciate them, and it's so good uh, to have them. Uh, again, Dr. Owens uh, have read many of their credits, and we have many more that we're going to go through. But they're getting ready for a farewell tour. Oh, my goodness. This cannot be the last time that y'all going to travel, and we have a chance to come out and enjoy that rich anointing that is on you. Is that right? Well, I, uh, <laughs> it just might be. Uh, uh, Actually, probably the last time you'll see the brothers doing a nothing but the hitch tour with a live band. You probably won't see that. Uh, uh, so it's a once in a lifetime thing. So I, I suggest that everybody that hear that we're coming near their city, they Amen. need to run, get some tickets. Amen. All Amen. right. I mean, I was right. Amen. Well, if that be the case, <laughs> this really makes this a double blessing for us to have the opportunity uh, to interview, uh, as Dr. Owen said, the famous, the legendary. Amen. Uh, can I add another adjective? The still here, uh, <laughs> Williams <laughs> Brothers. Amen. Because it's, we've lost so many. That's right. We've lost so many. And it's just good to appreciate those that are here. Is that right, Dr. Owen? Amen. Well, it's good to see you all. You have been blessing to many of the past generation, mm -hmm. and you're also being a blessing to the generation now. Now, my mother... She went on to be with the Lord a few years ago, but my mom simply loved you all. I can remember up until the end of her dying time, she made sure she would put your uh, back then albums in and play them yeah. just about every day. Yeah. She would, even when they broke, I had to go get another one to make mm -hmm. sure she heard it. So <laughs> I know you all have been a blessing to many that have went on. And it's just good, as Bishop said, to see you all are still here being a blessing even to this uh, 21st century people. And for that, we uh, give God praise and just glad, as Bishop said, to have you all to continue the work of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, it, it, is, it is an honor because we actually got a third generation of, of fans that's been supporting the Williams Brothers since we started. We did our first album in 1973, Jesus Will Fix It and all that on that. The album was entitled I'm Holding On and and the rest is history. We've been going ever since then for over 60 years, man. And uh, oh, God, God. Has sustained, God has sustained us, man. We've, uh, we've probably traveled, uh, recorded, uh, sing on a TV show or something through the years with, with some of the, with most of the biggest gospel artists that's, that was in that era since we, before us and then after us, you know. And that's, I mean, to me, that's uh, that's one of the the, the 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 blessings for me just to be able to build those bridges and relationships over the years, and and the fans, man. So to get out here and do this farewell tour, it's it is going to be phenomenal. It's going to be great. We're going to do. Dre, you 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 just need to start naming some of the hit songs, man. So you you grew up. Great, Dre said he was a baby when he started listening to it. which song, <laughs> which, which song was it, Dre? Jesus will fix it, nineteen seventy three, the year mm. I was born. You know, it's oh, one wow. of the first songs I've ever heard from 
the Williams brothers, you know, Jesus fixed to Jesus never say no. I'm just a nobody sweep around your front door. Uh, the goat, wow. uh, made the difference and, uh, yeah. holding on to my fate, you know, uh, yeah, mom prayed for me, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd be here another day. Even <laughs> all the songs that that has that had hit the radio yeah, airwaves yeah. in these last uh, uh, sixty plus years, you know. Oh, yeah. No, I was gonna say, you know, one of my favorites was uh, "Cooling Water." Cool. Uh, yeah. Water. Oh my oh, goodness. See, that's, oh, see. See, see, that's the thing. You know, cooling water came way. That they came down way down the line. line. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. way down the line, man. Yeah. And, and, and um. Like I said, the, the the group has recorded so many messages. Oh, you not just songs, yeah, just messages. Yeah, that, that, yeah, you got you got. I mean, man, yeah. you got living living testimony. You got the waiting on Jesus, man. You mm-hmm. got you know, Mel, Mel. God will God will deliver. God will deliver let, on time. Let's just huh? put it like this: we there are so many hit songs in uh-huh. this group. That it would take us probably two or three concerts back to back to really do all of them. <laughs> all of them. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. great. Well, let me ask Andre this. Uh, Andre, you are you all mentioned all the beautiful songs that have ministered to people. But what do you think is the most memorable thing in the ministry through these years? What has been one of the most memorable things that really sticks out in your mind that has been a blessing to you to just continue the work? Well, I mean, for me, uh, being that I was a young boy that dreamed of singing with the Williams Brothers, you know, uh, this is, since I've been there for 20 years now, and since I've been there, it's been a dream come true. You know, I was a little boy dreaming of saying, I'm gonna sing with them one day, mama. I'm gonna mm-hmm. sing with them one day, brother. And And just to be a part of something so major, so, uh, so so such a blessing to the world. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm-hmm. Just to be a part of that that line that l- accolade is just amazing mm-hmm. to me in itself. Le- you know, Le- that's, that's yeah. yeah, that yeah. that's just me in in itself. Mm-hmm. But uh, if I got to say one of the most memorable things that we've done, I never forget we was in a we was in Sweden, we was in Sweden. Oh. And this this was a town that they said, okay, if you're going to get out, you got two hours of daylight for you to get out and do what you want to do. The rest of the time is pitch black dark. <laughs> <laughs> and, and me and Melvin, me and Melvin was running around the little town in Sweden like, all right, we got two hours to do this. And literally, <laughs> it was only daylight for two hours. Literally. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yes, man. It's 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 unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, well, well Melvin, let me ask you then, um, uh, just a segue on what Dre said. Now, let me ask you this. You're in a position um, with all the hits you've had, all the success by the grace of God you had. I'd like to ask you this question. I want to ask you about what it's like to be famous. I want to ask you this question. Does fame come with a price? Mm. Well, well, I never really thought of myself as being famous. <laughs> I, I may be popular, 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 but not well, you're famous, buddy. <laughs> not, 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 but not famous. Uh, I mean, there is a price and there's a sacrifice to come with it because you know it's a, uh, especially when you when you're doing it for. For the love of God in the ministry, and uh, yeah. I mean, you have to put up with a lot of things that you really don't want to put up with. And we sang many times and didn't get paid, and we just did it for the people, and we did it because the people came out and just to just to save our name and save our name. And and uh, mm-hmm. but uh, because a lot of people just didn't understand that. This, it's a ministry, but it's also a business. So we have to, we had we had to weigh that out and just see which one weighed the most. And uh, but just uh, yeah, it came with a price, man. And uh, we had to deal with. Um, I mean, 
uh, singing in cold buildings with no heat, uh, singing late at night. And uh, uh, we had to deal with some jealousy and envy within yeah. the industry, in the industry by us being a young artist, a new upcoming artist. And uh, so it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was that kind of thing. But God kind of like overshadowed all that, man. And he opened doors for us um, that was unbelievable. We didn't even see, we didn't even see. I recorded a song yesterday with a friend who used to play drums with, uh, with us. And, uh, and, uh, and there was a line or two in that song. I told him I wanted to make sure it was in there. Because, you know, what I'm about to say is God opened doors for us that we couldn't, that we couldn't see. But wow. I said, it's, it's a lot of people thank God for opening doors. But I want to take a moment out to thank God for closing doors mm-hmm. that wasn't meant that wasn't meant for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm good. saying? So, so I, you know, thank you for opening doors I couldn't see. But thank you, but also for closing doors that really wasn't meant for me. Because otherwise, you know, we wouldn't have been in this position today and where we are today uh, uh, if it had not been. Well, God closing doors and say, this ain't, this ain't for you right now. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta carry it. You gotta carry it across a little bit mm-hmm. further, you know? So, mm-hmm. yeah. But so that's, well, that's what me. Well, 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 no, but let me just, let me, let me just give you a follow-up question because people looking forward to the, uh, to the tour, they're looking forward to whatever music that you're going to put out. But we appreciate you being so transparent because people like to know sometime the person behind um, the, um, the ministry. Let me ask you this. Because you have been around, and you may not want to own it, but you are famous. And, but you have been around a certain kind of people. Have you ever seen fame change somebody oh yes 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 i've uh, over the years we've seen a lot of that you know a lot of people get caught up in in material things caught up in you know the hit records uh and uh, all of the, the 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 limelight and stuff and they lose focus on what it's all about and they lose focus on their career they lose focus on god and it and it and i've seen it be a downfall for a lot of artists through the years but we've always tried and i've always tried to to just be who I am and be, you know, I'm just a country boy from Mississippi, born and raised on a farm. You know, we've had hogs and cows and we picked cotton, we had cornfields and gardens and as they said, watermelons and peas and greens. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so, and I just kind of, and that kind of just spill over with the Williams brothers, you know, my brothers and Doug and even Leonard and Henry and, um, uh, you know, because we, you know, our, our fathers and mothers, you know, we were just country raised, man. They didn't, you know, they they didn't send us to church. They took us to church and we we had that upbringing. So we did it just spill over into uh, the music industry. And the one thing that I really um, is kind of hitting me now that uh when people say, man, as long as I've been knowing you, you know, you've always been the same, yeah. you know, and it just kind of hit mm-hmm. me. I'm like, okay, what, what am I, what else, what else am I, what was I supposed to be? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, but uh, I just, I just, I just learned and, um, and we've learned of a group and Dre and Doug it, to be ourselves and be who you are. Then you don't, if you be yourself, you don't have to try to be somebody else every day and change. And, and uh, when they see you, they see you the next time, you're the same, you know, That's you good. know I'm, I'm not going to try to be the whinings one day, uh, uh, BB whinings one day and uh, or somebody else the next day, Fred Hammond or Kurt Franklin, I'm going to be me. And I'm going to give you what God gave me, you know. Amen. That's good. You know, you know, and I liked how you answered that question. You didn't come out, uh, and I think that's how we lose people or God. If it's put in your head, you know, I'm famous, I'm wonderful, and that's what you're expecting of people, then I think you really lose God. But I was glad to see that you didn't come out with the name that I'm famous because God is famous. we just people. Mm-hmm. But I love to hear the humility that that's not what it's about. 
it's about am I doing the will of God? Am I am I famous with God? Mm -hmm. That's the most important mm -hmm. thing right there. So that part I like, and that's the way you can continue to be used of God when that is your main focus. Mm -hmm. Put that aside and let's get back into the will of God. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I'm not saying that you know, you know we didn't we didn't kind of get the big head and all that, but we had people that was guiding us. Our dad was manager, manager, yeah. manager, and he'd always put us back in place, you know, and uh, you know. But he said one thing that 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 stuck with me throughout my career until this day, and because uh, we came out on our first album, like Dre was saying, 1973, all first three albums was huge albums for us. We were just kids, teenagers, early 20s, early teens and 20s. And and you kind of get the big head and, and we like we like try to follow up on that one and say, well, we got to be a stay on the top. We got to, this got to be a number one. The next one got to be a number one. The next, mm -hmm. next, next. And my dad sent us, my dad sent us down one day. He said, let me tell you something. He said, if, if you own the top, he said, if you own the top, he said, ain't but one way, if you don't stay on the top, ain't but one way for you to go. And that's down. Yeah. And that kind of and that kind of hit me. I'm like, okay. Yeah. That dude, it makes sense. He says, so if you're not on top, you gonna you you gonna always be going down. He says, so so just he just he just said, he said, do like do like the old dog that we had on the, on our steps, you know, that would never move off the steps, you know. And we going in and out of the door, you know, they mm. had to kick him out. They had to kick him off the step to make it move because he was so lazy. He said, "Just do like that old dog did. Just stay in the way." <laughs> Let me ask Dre a question on that. So, now Dre, for you to come in this group, did you ever feel intimidated when they asked you? How did you feel when they first asked you to come sing? Was this you felt like God was answering your prayer, or did you feel like, "Oh my God, I got to sing with these Williams"? How did you feel about that? Well, it was it was never an intimidation feeling. Um, uh, I was always a peculiar kid, you know. I was always a different kid. Um, I wore I wore church clothes to school. That's just how different I was, you know. Yeah, I was really different. And when when that time came, um, a lot of people don't know that I served this group for ten years. Yeah. Uh, before they actually actually became before they asked me to become an actual William brother. Mm. I served this group for 10 years in the background. Mm. Not the front line, not not on the record covers, not on the album covers. I served from the back. And uh so being that it was a dream of mine, it was a, it was a it was a blessing to be asked to even join the group but in 2010 when i did my first uh record as a william brother which was live at the hard rock uh blux in mississippi we did a live uh recording and video there i mean video and audio there that is like when the dream became a reality because as long as i was in the back it was cool and the thing mm -hmm. about it is even while i was in the back there were people saying you belong in the front they need you in the front. Uh, you, why, why are you putting yourself out there like this for them to, you know, uh, downgrade your talent, your gift? But I always believe God that in due season, uh, we shall reap if we faint not. Oh, that's and good. In 2010, I, I, I was able to reap the benefits of the things I did 10 years prior. And mm -hmm. I saw my picture. I never forget, I walked in Walmart. In, 2000, in 2011, actually, and I picked up the Live at the Hard Rock record and I seen my picture on the record. And it was like everything became clear to me then. You know that, wow, like, wow, this really happened. This is really real. So you knew that it was God that had exalted you. And that's the way you should do it because you were a part of the group. You didn't push your way into it. You let a God. I, I, I believe... Uh, uh, you got to wait on your time. You got to wait on your time. And a lot of time, uh, artists and people who want to be artists do this professional because it's a different thing when you do it on a professional level. A lot of times we can't, we want a microwavable career. Mm -hmm. And 
and and it don't come like that. You know, it it took the stories that Melvin Doug and Mr. Green told me about when uh, uh, names like James Cleveland gave them 15 minutes to make an impact on the crowd or else they wouldn't have another shot at it. It, it took stories like that, mm -hmm. really looking at these guys and because the truth of the matter is I'm a, I'm the, other than a William brother, I'm the ultimate William brother fan first. Oh, so right. yeah. Yeah. So I, when I hear stories like that, that they had to come up through the ranks, it makes me humble. It causes me to be just as humble as I need to be to be able to do and be that uh, minister that God wants me to be for this time. You know, so uh, th that's what it's all about. You got to, you got to, sometimes you just got to wait your time because if you, if you go too fast, you might not, you might miss the lessons that you need to be in 2022. And when you jump from, from 2010 to 2022 and you don't go through two, 2015, some in 2015 was meant to happen for you to be relevant in 2022. Uh, so that, that's, that's kind of like what I get from this argument. Well, you know what? Listen, listen, y'all, listen, y'all talking like preachers here. <laughs> and, and a lot of times, a lot of times when I listen, a lot of times when I listen to your music, um, especially you, Melvin, when you're leading, you are, you almost like you're preaching um, when you actually, uh, you know, just like you said, you're just doing that new song and you wanted a certain thing or certain lyrics in there because you want to get out a certain message. But I want to ask the question. I want to ask you a question. But uh, I'm going to ask the question of both of you. I want Dre to answer first, and then I want the senior man, Melvin here, uh, <laughs> to come after the younger man. But I want to know because you guys are getting ready for this wonderful tour. And I guarantee you, United States, we're going to look forward to it. You're looking to get ready for, for one of the tour, and I have no idea how many miles you've already charted, how much traveling and miles you've already gone. I can only imagine. I don't know the number. But let me ask you something about, let me ask you a question that I want the younger man than the older man, the more seasoned man, shall we put it that way, uh, to answer. On the road, on the road, if you were talking to a younger gospel artist on his way up, what would you warn him about the road, the temptations on the road? First, Dre, and then we'll do Melvin. All right. Well, I'm, I was born and raised in, a, in the church. Uh, my daddy was a pastor, my grandfather passed, my other grandfather passed. So that was a that's a scripture that kept me drug free, that kept right. me alcoholic free, that kept me mm -hmm. free to not be like the other statistics that may have been road. And that scripture, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all this righteousness and all mm -hmm. things that were added. That kept me grounded to always seek God uh, no matter what in mm -hmm. any decision, in anything that I do. Uh, and, and I thank God for my upbringing because my upbringing kept me from the from the monsters of the industry the, right. of the, on the road. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And not to mention those three guys taught they taught all of us how to be men first. Mm. They taught us how to be men first. They taught us how to be businessmen first. So it's a lot of things that Melvin, Doug and Green taught us over the years that kept us grounded. Even when we wanted to act a fool, it's like they didn't deter us from acting a fool, but they'll tell us the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, what's going to happen if you act a fool wow. and how is that going to hurt the rest of your career and your group right That's now? Good. Yeah. You know good. what I'm saying? So it was yeah. in, in the William brothers, it was like, it was like fathers to us, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, and they really, they really, held us accountable for being the men that God wanted us to be. So, well, now, now that, that, that is so well put. Now let's ask, um, let's ask the teacher, Melvin, <laughs> Melvin, if you were talking to a younger upcoming gospel artist with all your experience and what you have seen and what you've experienced, what you've been tried and tested with, what would you warn him about the road.
Well, first of all, uh, you're talking about an up and coming young artist, even before you get to the road. All right. Uh, you have to, uh, an artist, uh, a young artist, have to be able to listen and 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 comprehend um, mm -hmm. knowledge of of of. It's kind of like what Dre is saying bef of, of the people that's that's gone before you. And the one thing I would say about a lot of the new artists that are out now, they that have not made it, have not gotten a big record or whatever you want to say. Let me let me put it this way. There's a lot of new artists that can sing, but there are a lot of those artists are not meant to be professional artists on the road and traveling a uh, recording professional artist. Oh, that's you good. That's good. If you that's understand good. what I'm saying, there yeah. are a lot of people that can sing, but you're not you not professional cut out to be an artist for the road and for the traveling. You you might sing, but you you might be the one that needs to stay at the church all suddenly. You know what I'm saying? Come on, come <laughs> and on, do, come do on. Do that because everybody, mm. you know, and that, and that's not a down. That's not a downplay. No. That's just that's, right. that's the reality of like everybody's not cut out to be. You know, you first you got and of what I'm saying is you got to seek ye first the kingdom of God and like God, let me show me my gift. Yeah. And if this, this is my if this is my gift, you know. You you will make it as a professional on the road. You're gonna hit some bumps and bruises, but you'll make it because if it's that's your gift, and you pursue your gift that God gave you, God said he, your gift will make room for you. So you won't have right. to you won't have to be pushing, 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 pushing. I want to be this. I want to be that. And wondering why things didn't happen. Well, a lot of times things didn't happen because that wasn't the place you're supposed to be anyway. You know, you missed. You missed your calling. Hmm. You know, you might might be a good singer, but you might be the one that that need to be the one that choose that God chose to to teach others. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Or, yeah. or the piano player to to show others how to play, and and they take that um, that lesson and that and that and that uh, information and, and that knowledge, and then they go farther. So a lot of a lot of them. Don't get caught up in the hype. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. You, you know, you can't get caught up in the hype. You got to know that God gave you that gift and you got to be able, to, you know, first of all, when somebody walk up and say, I want to be like the Williams brothers. And I first I, I look at them like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to be like, you know, John P. Key or Fred Hammond. I'm like, Really? Do you really know what you're saying? You know, wow. Wow. so when so if you want to be like me, that means you gotta you gotta go through the things that I went through. You gotta go. You gotta mm -hmm. put up with all the sleepless nights. You gotta put up with all the not getting paid. You gotta put up with mm -hmm. all the things that we had to put up to be like me. You, I don't. You know, you, so that 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 being said, I think they just need to they need to. Ask God to show them their gift, and then he, and if you and if if whatever that gift is, if you take it and use it and and, and use it sincerely, and you know that and, and thank God for your gift, He'll make room for you. Whether it be a bricklayer, a carpenter, a, a mechanics, you know, mechanic or whoever, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you know, some some uh, some people in the choir, you know. You know, they they singing, they think they supposed to be the lead singer and they should be just singing in the background. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, man, I, and I just think uh, you know, and as a young artist, you know, even the ones that that, that are out there and and God has chosen, you gotta educate yourself, you gotta, you know, with knowledge and I understand with lawyers and uh, learn about the business side of it. And, uh, and because it all kind of comes together, you know, you know, you can get out there and you can be a big uh, a hot artist one minute and, and you blow all your money, throw all your money away and don't have nobody to, to control you and say, Hey, mm -hmm. save this, put this back. Uh, and, and for a rainy day and that is so good yeah. mm -hmm. well Melvin let me ask you this so and those were good answers both of you all appreciate that but why have you all continued to stick with traditional gospel music 
Well, actually, we've done a lot of different kinds of within our career. And if you listen to our albums, we've done a lot of, you know, we've done praise and worship within those albums, or we've done con- con- contemporary uh, quartet, uh, you know, just choir music. Uh, but uh, I think the one thing that, 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 um, that the reason why we are still there is because all of our biggest songs when we started out was traditional gospel songs. And that for, you know, probably 20 years, you know, that those are the songs that made us. So, hey, my dad used to say, if it ain't, if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. So, All right. <laughs> no, I love it. No, I really, I love the fact that mm-hmm. we still can have that kind of music, but so many have transitioned from that. But it's good to go out and have the refreshing, to me, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. traditional gospel. That really still mm-hmm. blesses me. So I'm just glad to see there are artists out there that are still giving that kind of music to the body of Christ. The, our biggest songs was traditional songs, so we just stuck, in, stuck with that. But the most important thing, whether it was a contemporary song or traditional songs, Doug and I and my brothers, and we all tried to write about songs uh, and, re- and 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 experiences that we've had and and experiences that people were going through uh, in you know in our community and so you know from the heart touches the heart so we just tried to write about things that we we uh, you know that we see and we grew up with and the things that we had to deal right. with the hard times the, 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 and God and God bringing us through those times, and God delivering, God delivering on time, and you know, and uh, you know, and 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 knowing that uh, you know God answers prayer. So we wrote songs about you know God answering prayer. Prayer made the difference, and you know, so we wrote about things that we that we were living, man. You know, so yeah, and, and you people know what? were that, dealing with. Yeah, now you know what that is really what made your music great and last you know as i listen to it mm-hmm. just like i said now 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 now, I, now you may not be called to the ministry to preach but we really hear the preach in your music it's like you don't hold back you don't hold back you actually put it right where it is you uh, can i put it this way you say it in your music like it is uh, it's not like you're saying, I'm just going to entertain people to entertain people. Right, right. But I want to impact uh, people. Now, that's why this this whole interview is such a blessing. I, I know you're getting ready for the tour, but this interview is such a, a blessing because we have the senior minister or the senior person of the group. Then we have a younger person that came into the group uh, later, which gives us a, a different perspective. Mm-hmm. of really how deep your music is, how deep the calling on you to bring the music to the people of God, it is really that deep for it to start with your generation and even go to Dre's generation as he comes into it as well, and tells next. you mm-hmm. how long lasting and how penetrating uh, your ministry is. We're, it's just such a blessing. Is that right, Dr. Mm-hmm. Amen. It is. Uh, <laughs> And I tell people all the time, you know, you know, you talk about contemporary gospel, you talk about the inspirational, traditional, choir music, whatever. For me, the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit is is the Holy Spirit. It <laughs> it don't change. It don't oh, change good. because you because of you because of you singing one kind of song, one kind mm-hmm. of, you know, one type of genre of music. Uh, when the spirit comes, it comes, you know, when it touches people, it touches people, you know, that somebody, they don't say, well, oh, I got saved on a contemporary song. Oh, I got saved on Amazing Grace. Oh, I, no, you know, it's God don't change, man. The Holy mm-hmm. Spirit don't change, man. You know, it's it's the same. So what what is this is what touches you, man. And, and it's amazing to me that now that you bring up about songs um, of these songs how a song can change a person, change personal life and turn yeah. people around. And uh, when a doctor can't do it or when a minister can't do it when, and somebody just come up with a song and it just like, it's like just touches you, man, and just sticks with you. And uh, so it's a, it's a powerful thing, man, whether it's 
praise and worship, uh, contemporary, uh, traditional. But but those songs last, Amazing Grace last because it had substance, you know. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, at the cross last because Mama prayed for me. It is it, it had substance, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, precious Lord. It had substance, you know. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it did. It, it didn't say, "Well, I'm just going." This is just for the young people. No, if you listen to it, and if you're trying to get something out of that song, if you can't feel something, now you a little bit out of touch. <laughs> you know, some some of the, some of those old some of those old songs somewhere supposed to hit you. You know, because I, you know, Drake could be a witness to this man. We've heard. Little kids, man, singing "Still Here" and "Cool and Water," and living testimony. I'm like, I don't know if you know what you're singing or not, but you singing, <laughs> you know, you say, <laughs> you know, the the people that so wanting to know about the tour and wanting to keep up with yeah. the Williams yeah. brothers yeah. and stay in yeah. contact, uh, you know, they can stay uh, connected to the brothers and find out everything that's going on about the tour and where we're going to be and. Uh, what's going to happen in different cities and souvenirs and t-shirts and all that kind of stuff. They can, they can text um, brothers, text to brothers, all capital letters, brothers to 601-210-7800. That's, that's 601-210-7800. And you can stay connected with the brothers and keep up with what's going on and, and all the info that you need. And you, I mean, that number just puts you direct to whatever you need to know that's going on with the brothers. And for booking the tour, the, the other number is 414-699-8357. For bookings, that's 414-699-8357. And that's Bridget Fleury. And uh, for those out there looking to book this tour, you better come on because it's a once in a lifetime farewell tour of the Williams mm-hmm. Brothers with a live band. We're going to be doing at least 20 songs in this show. <laughs> 20 That's songs right. in this concert. We're going right. to, you know, I know we're going to be tired, but we're going <laughs> we're gonna to do our best to do it. <laughs> we'll have to cut right. a few of them, man. But, uh, but for me, and I know Dre is probably going to say the same thing, uh, is to, you know, just to pray for us. You know, we want you all to pray for us that this tour be a success and that people will be saved and uh, mm-hmm. lives will be changed through this, through the, the, through this uh, tour and, and through the songs that we sing and uh, hopefully we'll bring another whole generation, you know, of, mm-hmm. of people by the time this tour ends, because it's going to go on if on over into next year, May, May over next year. So it's it's that that would be my prayers for you guys to pray, you know, for the group and the, this prayer. Old folks just said, "Pray our strength." <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. Yeah, that is so good. Well, listen, you know what? This is uh, this has been um, uh, such a amen. such a blessing, and uh, amen. I can't wait to get it out on the air, and, and that it, uh, people can be exposed to it. Uh, and uh, again, Melvin and uh, Dre, it's I, I believe it's a God combination that <laughs> He brought the two of you on. Uh, it keeps uh, we can actually hear the anointing and the wisdom uh, that God has given to you. And honestly. When it, when when the bottom line is drawn, it is the anointing that draws people in. Okay, and we're really gonna let the people. We're really gonna put the word out about the tour. All right. God bless now. God bless you all.